and we're going to have a good time tonight. And if you remember Christmas's past, what were some of the things you did? You told the Christmas story? Well, we have someone that is going to tell the night before Christmas to the children in front. Okay, Mary. It was the night before Christmas. All through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, about visions of sugar, and in their heads. The stockings were hung by the chimney of care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would come down. And on her kerchief, I and my cat had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When up on the lawn there was such a crack, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and drew up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear? But a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen, to the top of the porch. To the top of the wall, now, dash away, dash away, dash away all. His dry leaves, that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the house top, his courses they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof, the prancing and pawing of each little boy. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just over his head. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bowl, and the beard on his chin was as white as a snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old girl. And I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head in his face soon gave me to know I had nothing to drink. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings. Then, turned with a jerk, and laying a finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of the thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Next week. Oh, look who's here. We got some surprise visitors. They came from the North Pole. Ho, ho, ho. And now, what we're going to have remember, you can't have an old fashioned Christmas without Christmas carols. Janice, do you want to turn that on? Um, it's got to be plugged in, I <laughs> I know we have a lot of good singers in this room because when we decorated our Christmas tree here a week ago or two weeks ago, a lot of you sang. 
So we need to hear all of you sing really loud tonight to show that, hey, we have good singers at High Acres Manor. Good reader to you, isn't she? Do you know Mary had a birthday yesterday? Yes, now she's a real old lady, real granny. <laughs> Away in a manger, no crib. The stars in the sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus was Thank <laughs> you. 